the conventions. So we have deposited mm -hmm. them in, in New York mm -hmm. and some in Vienna. So in the legal framework, we, are, we have done something. And then human resources are also said. And then we are also in, in collaboration with the International Atomic Energy Agency. We we'll send experts here every day. We work with them. And then also we have the, some, of the, some countries that we started with, especially Russia. Even last week they were here. And we were having some talks on how to uh, re revisit the uh, project that is started during Chromas Tai. So basically, if the, the, the world is there, uh, political support and financing. Financing, there's a way out. Some of them, they have a financing like uh, BU, Bill, uh, Own, and Operate. And then Bill, Own, Operate, and Transfer. And so if you are ready, like mm. some people come here and they build thermal plants and then sell the electricity, the same way, we can just get Russia, any uh, developed country, to come and just build a nuclear power plant right here <coughs> for, 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 for our use. So right. we are ever ready. All right, Mr. Anderson, um, uh, would you say we have the right structures in place to begin a nuclear power program in the country? Yes, we have the right structures in place. Actually, um, the nuclear division at the Ministry of Energy was formed last year. And it's part of the recommendations of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Then we have formed eight technical groups working on this nuclear power program. And it's being coordinated by the Nuclear Division and the Ministry of Energy. And the eight technical groups are dealing with the financing aspect. How, what are the financing strategies? What are the legal issues? One important area is the regulatory. There has to be an, an independent body <coughs> which will see to the licensing of nuclear power plants in this country, which will regulate the operations and ensure that the right thing is done. You are doing it in line with the later international safety rules. And we have a, a unit at the uh, Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, the Radiation Protection Board, which is now being expanded and empowered to deal with this issue. In fact, efforts are underway even to decouple it from the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission to become an independent body, uh, given the necessary legal powers and so on and so forth to undertake these uh, functions. Then we have, um, the environmental assessment groups. We have nuclear power technology assessment group which will assess which nuclear power technologies are suitable for Ghana and so on and so forth. So all these structures have been put in place and the group was inaugurated last year, September, that uh, uh, committees mm. that were, that are to undertake these uh, studies were inaugurated last year, September, and they've been set for action this year. Mm. Where there have been a little bit problem with funding but we are, we, we'll come back we are and we'll come back to find the way issue of uh, uh, funding. Of, uh, you know, we went through elections last year, so that administratively, right. the, most of the ministries are now getting mm -hmm. their substantive ministers and so on and so forth to carry the, out their functions. Right, Mr. Anderson, we'll come back to the issue of funding. But Mr. Bavana, are, are we there as a nation? Um, as a nation, I think we are there. Uh, the school for uh, nuclear analyzed sciences uh, has been set up to train Ghanaians to man any nuclear, op nuclear operations that we are going to have in this country. Um, and therefore, uh, I think we are there. We've got Ghanaians in the school, they have, they have been trained, and therefore, if there is any uh, 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 installations or any operations to be done, we should have the right number, uh, right uh, staff, and the numbers in, in the right uh, quantities to be able to run this. So I don't think we have a problem with that. Uh, the only other problems we may have is that when you start having nuclear plants, you must think about proliferation and about the fact that you could have uh, uh, terrorists and that kind of thing mm -hmm. laying their hands on some nuclear stuff and for them to make what we call dirty bombs and that kind of thing. That's why I'm so hearing in Syria now. Yes, and therefore that is one of the things that we need to guard uh, seriously if we are, are going to uh, run a, a nuclear power plant here. Right. Uh, Prof, um, back to you again. What examples of nuclear power generation do we have in Africa? In Africa, it's only South Africa that has uh, two nuclear power plants operating. And you know, and you know that in Africa, the advanced country is uh, just uh, <laughs> South Africa. So in mostly, as Nkrumah said, uh, the greatest economic source of power uh, is, is, is uh, nuclear energy. And if you look into the world, all those uh, countries that has 
economic power, they all operate uh, nuclear power plants. So unfortunately, in Africa, we have only one country operating nuclear power plant. But we have about 10, 10 research reactors operating in about eight countries in, in Africa. But for uh, electricity generation, we have only South Africa. Right. Um, Mr. Nissen, nuclear safety has been um, a major issue, a major problem. Um, the argument put forth by, you know, some countries on reasons why they wouldn't even attempt going nuclear is the issue of safety because of the hazardous nature of nuclear. Um, are we ready? Are we safe? Do we have the safety nets, mechanisms in place to contain any such danger? Yeah, this is a, a very important question. Uh, whenever you talk of nuclear power, the major issue, as uh, our colleague Mr. Pavana uh, has said, is uh, safety. But the reality on the ground and the statistics on the ground rather points to the fact that nuclear is safer than most of the technology that we are comfortable with. I have some figures here, my studies that have been con conducted. And if even you put on Chernobyl and then Fukushima together, the number of fatalities, say my island, the number of fatalities per unit power generated, nuclear is the lowest among the ba major base load power generation systems. Uh, coal, we have 160,000 people dying for every trillion kilowatt hours of electricity generated. What, how, how many people? 160,000 per trillion ki kilowatt hours of electricity generated. Oil, 36,000. Gas, 4,000. Biofuel, 24,000. Solar rooftop, 400. Wind, 150. And nuclear, 90. And even that of hydro, where when I compiled the list, I left it out. But that is also in the thousands of people dying mm -hmm. per unit uh, power generated. The major concern with nuclear power is that because of the events of uh, Hiroshima, it has uh, sort of have an impression in people's mind that it's the most dangerous and most devastating <laughs> sort of technology. But there have been designs that are being put in place to ensure that these major accidents which have occurred do not occur with the level of even fatalities that uh, have taken place. In the case of Fukushima, two people died, and the reported fatalities so far is two, are two. Uh, projections have been made on the cancer cases as a result of radiation, and it goes to about 100 people. At the worst case scenario, 100 people die. 2,000 people perish on our street every year in here in Ghana. My world drove to this place, you see, and so on and so forth. But that's, that doesn't catch much of, of media attention. Mm. But let there be a slight leakage in the nuclear facility. So wh wh why is it so? Why is it so? As I said, the, the, the major issue has to do with the, the, the explosive nature of nuclear birth in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So it has got an imprint mm. in people's mind. In fact, most of the international agency, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the World Nuclear Association and the rest, and most energy experts have the view that the nuclear problem is a PR problem, public relation problem, how to allay public fears. Mm. What is happening in certain countries like Germany and all these things is due to public fears about the technology. Not many people are dying in Germany as a result of uh, nuclear power generation but it's due to people's uh, public fear mm -hmm. that technology is unsafe, whereas it's really, really safe. In Japan, when Fukushima accident took place, there was another plant in Onagawa, very close to the epicenter of the tsunami and earthquake, and nobody died. And that reactor is of modern design. And these are the type of reactors that have been put in place that have been accepted for operation in modern times. And the resilience of such reactors to such events like earthquakes and the rest have been demonstrated by the Onagawa plant mm. in Japan. Unfortunately, the media didn't report that one. They rather reported Fukushima, which was an old reactor, <laughs> which was made in 1975. So in terms of nuclear safety, with the new breed of reactors that are being designed, in fact, I will not permit to go to the right. technical aspects of it to explain things more. Right, right. So, so, so Mr. Nissen, let, let me move quickly. Such events them. like the previous accidents and this mm. are going to be uh, minimal, and the, the, the fatality cases are even going to be reduced 
I'm sure if, if we, you were given a, you know, some time, you could make a strong case. But uh, Mr. Ababana, um, yeah. would, you, would you admit uh, that it is a PR um, um, problem? No, I wouldn't. You see, the fact of the matter is that numbers sometimes don't tell the truth. How many uh, nuclear plants do you have in America? 104 nuclear plants. How many uh, 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 fossil fuel plants do you have? Thousands. So if you're having, like, talking about a few and there are a few accidents, it doesn't mean that if they were also in thousands, there won't be a, a lot of accidents. Mm. You get a point. So if you, you give those numbers, they, they, they are the, the facts, but that's not the truth. Yeah, if I be, a, a quick, if I a be quick reaction. To yeah. you, see, yeah. you see, the reason why they quoted per unit power generated. It's not per plant. It's not per plant, <coughs> but per, because you build a thousand megawatt plant. Somebody has built a 50 megawatt coal plant or 100 megawatt coal plant. Yeah. If one person dies in a 100 megawatt uh, plant, mm. it is like 10 people uh, if one person die in a thousand megawatt plant, mm -hmm. it's like ten people die in a hundred megawatt plant. Oh, okay. The reason is that if, on the average, for every hundred megawatt of electricity, one person is dying, then if you have to build more of those hundred, 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 up to thousand, how many people will die? Ten. Okay. So, the proper statistical analysis is to consider. How the risk benefit assessment, mm. how much energy are we getting from this plant, and how many lives are we losing as a result of, that, uh, of this source of energy? And nuclear power plants normally come in large capacities, 1,000 megawatts and mm. the rest. So if you put the 1,000 megawatts and one person dies within a, a period of time, and you build a coal plant, and one person dies, and it's 100 megawatt or 200 megawatt, it's not the same. So you can't just count the numbers and make such comparison. So right. there have been a lot of debates on this mm. issue, but the proper scientific way is to compare the unit fatalities per mm. unit energy delivery. Because the business here is to generate useful energy. Right, but uh, Mr. Um, above, and I think the bottom line is to allay the fears of Ghanaians because we need um, nuclear power yes. badly. A are you satisfied with the explanation? Um, I have my own reservations about some of these uh, uh, I'm not saying that Ghanaians cannot keep anything safe. We can keep things safe. And we've got people who are being trained to make sure that these things are safe. All I'm trying to say is that if you double the, the uh, generating capacity of a plant, you most likely will not double the number of staff in that plant. You get a point. So the fact that you have a big uh, uh, capacity in one place does not necessarily mean that uh, then the thing is safer because fewer people have died. It doesn't mean that. It's just that there's, there's a bigger capacity in one place, and because the capacity is big, you don't necessarily double the number of people there. But it does not mean that they, they, they are not. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the thing is that if you go to the various statistics of the, uh, the nuclear plants in America, whether private or public, there are a lot of government subsidies to make them uh, 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 viable. Mm. Are we prepared to give all those subsidies in Ghana to make our nuclear plant viable? If we are prepared to do that, fine. But there is a lot of costs that the nuclear industry doesn't talk about because they get a lot of tax breaks, they get a lot of government uh, guarantees, they get a lot of other things to be able to, to, to operate. Well, maybe Ghana is ready to do all that. <coughs> Otherwise, sure. then the cost of electricity will be much higher than the cost uh, of electricity uh, using mm. hydro. Right. L l l l prof, l let me come back to you. Let's look at this other component of the nuclear, nuclear um, debate. Um, talk of nuclear energy and then countries, America term as rogue states, North Korea, Syria, and then what other countries? Iran. Iran mm -hmm. come into mind. They're going to produce an atomic bomb. So that, that is a perception that is ingrained in, in, in many people. Uh, if we should go nuclear, don't we stand, you know, the same um, prospects of, you know, having that perception, especially if um, we are supposed, uh, a loan is supposed to go with conditionalities and you're saying, hey, no. Uh, they're not going to impose other conditionalities, um, unpalatable conditionalities on us. Yeah, thank you. 
I think before I answer the question, let me uh, have something to say on uh, Mr. Bavana's uh, system, uh, what he said. Actually, nobody will promote nuclear energy over hydro. And nobody will promote nuclear energy over maybe chem or whatever, if you have the ability to do that. And the energy, you have to do energy planning. And if you look into the country, all our, all our hydro resources are, are, are gone. And we are in this mess. So what do we do? So energy is basically uh, uh, necessity. Uh, the, the first driver is what called energy security. So we are talking about energy mix. We shouldn't rely only on hydro or thermal. Or when, when we rely on only two or three, you have a problem. So you bring every, all of them uh, together. In America and developed countries, that's what they do. They bring all the energy sources available together. So when there's a problem, high cost of thermal, you shift to another thing. So what we are saying is that we should, as a country, if we want to develop, we should bring all the sources of energy together so that what Nkrumah talked about, we'll be able to achieve it. That's what Nkrumah's aim. Nkrumah, when he was opening atomic energy uh, reactor, he talked about a re, uh, a renewable, and he said that uh, atomic energy should also uh, type what you call solar energy into the system. So he was bringing us a lot of work uh, to do. But on your question, uh, as I said from the beginning, nuclear uh, program is not a one country pr program. That's why UN uh, set up the International Atomic Energy Agency, what we call nuclear watchdog. And everything that you do should satisfy international uh, uh, requirement. So Ghana signed what we call NPT as far back as 1958, that is Non-Perforation Treaty. Mm. When you are signatory to that uh, treaty, it means that we are going to use nuclear energy for only peaceful purposes. And that's what Nkrumah stated in his address, that Ghana is going to harness nuclear energy for peaceful purposes only. And uh, there's also a difference between uh, nuclear weapons <laughs> and uh, nuclear ap uh, applications. We have so many nuclear applications, uh, and then for electricity also, uh, electricity generation. But the fear of people is that sometimes when you do proliferation of your nuclear uh, energy, then you'll be able to get the plutonium and those things that are deadly to, 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 to make a bomb. Mm -hmm. And that's the fear. Um, and as I said, when you are signated to a, a non-proliferation to the NPT, then every time, even if, are, even if you are not a signatory, every time the International Atomic Energy Agency will come for inspection. Mm -hmm. And if you are violating some of the international uh, regime laws, then they will, be, they will bring you to, to, to book. And there is also one thing that people should know, that radiation is everywhere. You have the natural radiation, which is killing people, but people don't know. I tell people that if you fly from here to London and back, you know the amount of radiation you receive. It's a huge <laughs> radiation. And also, we are dealing with a lot of radioactive, so they, are, they, are, they are more dangerous than spent fuel. Mm -hmm. Like uh, uh, those in the mines, those in the oil industry, those in the, in the breweries, they use radioactive sources. And we have to make sure that these ones do not fall into the hands of uh, criminal to mm. make it a dirty bomb. So whether we like it or not, the radiation, nuclear radiation is with us. And we are managing it in this country. And the sources are very, they are very small. So anybody mm. at all can take it and make a dirty bomb. And we have to make sure that these things, we collect them and then keep them. So uh, from natural radiation to artificial radiation, we, are, we always have it. So we should be able to expand it to make the bigger one. So right. that is my, my submission on that. Yes, uh, <clears throat> the issue of proliferation has become uh, an issue for discussion whenever a country decides to go nuclear. One important thing is depends on the country's political state and how it also operates in the international political arena. Are you the type that lo looking at the way you are operating, you could be suspected of doing something uh, which you are not supposed to do as per the non proliferation regime that want to create worldwide. So that is uh, very important. And as Prof. have just said, there are international verification tools to ensure that you are doing the right thing. In fact, it is worth noting that these days, if you are performing any clandestine operations, they can detect it. Mm. Because the sort of reagents we use, even in small, uh, one per billion or million, using that reagent could be detected. And when they detect the reagent, they will know that something 
uh, bad is going on. Mm. So after that, it could be detected. Right. And Ghana has committed itself. If I write, if even Dr. Nkrumah's speech, he clear, uh, he categorically stated it that we are not in for uh, proliferation of uh, nuclear weapon. We are not even Ghana's nuclear program is not meant for weapon production. Ours is for peaceful purposes. Peaceful purposes. Yeah. And we've kept a clean sheet right, right from <coughs> that time to date. We've been monitored because we have an atomic energy uh, commission here. And activities have been monitored. And in fact, our records are good. Mr. Bavana, um, you have your reservations, nevertheless. Um, uh, well, I think that if, the, gov if the, the, the country has decided to go nuclear, obviously, Ghana, we are known to be able to do things properly. So whatever safeguards we need to put in place to get it uh, uh, properly uh, secured, we, we will do it. So that's, that's not a problem. Right. It's a question of taking the decision first. Prof, when should we expect the first nuclear plant in the country? <laughs> As Mr. Babada said, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a big question. And uh, uh, if the country decide, and I think the country, they, they, have, they have decided because uh, as I told you, in 2008, uh, the then cabinet hmm, approved a memo uh, for the introduction of nuclear power, and this present government too has they have added it in the energy policy. And nuclear energy, as we said, takes a long time to prepare, and that's why Nkoma started earlier, so that we could have done it by now. And now that we have we have uh, started the thing in 2006. It will take us maybe another. Now they can build a reactor <coughs> in five years, uh, depend upon yeah. our our ability, uh, ability and the uh, systems in place. So you know, about if you are uh, um, you are very uh, serious and want to go for it, in you know, about 2020 we can we can we can get it. That's um, seven years away. Yeah, yeah. seven years we can. Get yeah. but then we have to move fast. Faster. No, mm, no. To to be able to get yeah. there. So well, with the energy plan activities that. We've conducted. We are placing nuclear between 2020 and 2025. 2025. Right. We are, we are running out of time, unfortunately. Uh, Mr. Bavana, um, is it attainable within seven years? Well, it's attainable. In all these things, it's a question of money. Once yeah. you can uh, uh, arrange the financing, it shouldn't be a problem. Right. Prof, I may have to um, come back um, to you. The Ghana Atomic Energy Commission is 50 years old. Um, successes and challenges, briefly. Yeah, as we started, Groma started Atomic Energy Commission, first of all, to produce radio isotopes and then energy. But unfortunately, that reactor didn't come on. So from that time onwards, from to that when uh, Achampong revived the place, uh, we have dealt with things in the health sector. In the health sector, we have helped the two, two centers, uh, uh, medical centers, Kolebu and then Konfuanochi for radiotherapy centers. And then we, uh, we also go around to make sure that the radiation workers are safe, they are like the x-rays, we monitor them, give them badges, and then we also issue permit and license all those people in the country that uses radiation. In the agri uh, field, we use uh, mutation breeding and biotechnology, and then we also have the gamma irradiator that we use to sterilize medical uh, items. And in the, in the field of industry, we have what we call the non-destructive testing. Uh, we, we use uh, these sources to make sure that the integrity of the, of the, of the world, in, uh, world point joints are well known. Like now they are helping, they are doing work with the buoy dam because they have a <coughs> strong concrete system there. So they have to monitor it and then be sure that everything is, is, is in order. So we, 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 we cut across from health to, to, to uh, ag agriculture, right. agriculture and industry. And also, as I said, we have to also manage the sources that we have in this country. And when, <coughs> we, when we give you a permit to bring the sources, uh, uh, ionizing, uh, ionizing sources, uh, after you, you are no more using it, you have to come and pick it and then uh, right. uh, uh, put them in a safer place so that nobody takes it to make any right. more. Right. Um, uh, Mr. Anderson, let me give you um, two seconds to make um, your final comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have of the view that uh, Kwame Nkrumah took a good decision to go uh, to consider nuclear power or nuclear science and technology as an area for this country. And the experience has shown that well, despite the challenges that we faced in the previous years, uh, the way forward is also seriously considered nuclear power as part of our energy mix and be added to the existing ones that are uh, already in our system. So 
it is laudable to consider the source of energy. Once again, you may have your reservations. <laughs> <laughs> Briefly. Um, I, I, I think that uh, there are a lot of things that Nkrumah talked about which have not been done mm. yet. Those should be done. The research reactor to do a lot of research work and, that, and those things that were not installed at the time of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, those should, uh, should, we should carry on with those ones. And then add on to whatever we, we, we've done. Uh, instead of jumping the gun, you don't have a research reactor. Yeah. You want to uh, 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 you, you, you want to go ahead and uh, uh, produce a lot of power uh, using uh, <coughs> nuclear technology. Right, so um, that's where we draw the curtains on today's edition of Talking Point. We are back same time next week. We've been talking to Professor Benjamin J. B. Nya, who is the Director General, Ghana Atomic Energy Commission. Isaac Ennison is the head, Nuclear Division Ministry of Energy. And to my far right is Clement G. Abavana, Energy Carbon and Management Consultant. Till we meet again next week, stay blessed. <laughs>